What's up guys? Welcome back to another Adrian Edits Logos. I'm Adrian Boisel and today we're gonna have some fun. I'm gonna edit some more logos. We got some great designs that were submitted uh, by some of the Instagraphics Pro Network members. They sent in their logos and a couple of members actually sent in multiple logos. So we're gonna jump into that today and have some fun and I'm gonna show you what I would do on some of these logos. So I'm gonna do my best to make these things look great and we're gonna have some fun. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. File new. All right, so we're gonna get started here. 19 by 2080, two, two pixel or two artboards. We're gonna go ahead and create that. Here we go. All right, so I got a couple artboards here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place this artwork from the files that I was sent. So I have this folder here on my desktop. I go over in here, Wendell. And I was looking through this logos and you guys can check these out. These are the ones that were submitted from just one person. You can see this dope since the 90s, that's pretty cool. If you look at this one here, dope since the 90s, another version. It's got kind of the cool squiggly lines on the top and bottom. Four, or, four arrows over here, three arrows on the bottom there. That's pretty cool. Uh, we got the other one, dope since the 90s. This one kind of has a saved by the bell look to it, which I think is pretty neat. And then we have this one, which is tag electronics, which I really liked and wanted to start off with this one first. I feel like this one has a lot of potential. Um, here's some other ones that we can just look at that I was sent in and we'll probably work on one more of these. But for now, I wanna just start with the simple one of tag electronics. So I liked where he was going with this. I'm gonna go ahead and place this on the artboard. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Let me hold down shift if you wanna make sure that you can strain the proportions. There we go. So now I'm gonna make sure I hit my artboard. Make sure I got my right artboard in here and I do. Control R, let me put this over here. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and the first thing I need to do is turn this into a, a vector. So this is a rastered image here. So I need to go to view or window image trace and open this baby up. This is my image trace box. I can hit the preview button and you can see there, it did a darn good job of actually retracing the whole entire image in black and white, but it didn't really get the electronics right. So I'm gonna make some slight adjustments to it here and see if I can clean this up a little bit. Looks pretty decent. Let me go in here and hit advanced. I'm gonna make sure I adjust my paths a little bit. So if I wanna make, nope, see as I do that more, it kind of messes it up. There we go, that's looking pretty good right there. Let me go up here on the corners, make sure I got my corners right. That one's pretty good, I like that. Now you can see here closely, I kind of have a mess up on my S. I can either do one of two things. I can just remove it completely. See, it's not really doing much here for me. Um, or I can continue to adjust my threshold to try to get it just right without any of those issues. Let me go up in here. The more I go up, the closer it should get. So that's pretty darn good, I think, right there. I got some rounded kind of corners on some of the spots, which I don't really care for that much, but I think this is a good start. This looks like a Montserrat type font. I don't know what font this is, but uh, in the future, I wanna try to get these from people in a vector format. It'll just save time. Uh, for just example purposes in this video. So we got this version now. All my dialog boxes are gone. Let me switch my, there we go. So now we'll hit expand, figured it out. Okay, we'll hit expand. That's gonna expand those letters there. So now I have this editable version of it, which I can now group. So I'm gonna hit shift command or shift control G. That's gonna ungroup this. So now I can do that again, shift command, shift control G, ungroup it. See, now I can select these individual objects. Now I want to try to find a font that's very similar. So I'm just going to type out tag, go ahead and hit tag. There we go. Nice. Okay. So we got this tag in here now. Now, like I said, I think it's a Montserrat type font. So we're going to go ahead and check. That's pretty darn similar. Um, I'm actually going to use this one. I like this one because it's similar. So I like how this is lined up on the, I like how, whoops, I'll show you here. I like how this is lined up on the G here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit shift command or shift control O or shift, yeah, shift command or shift control O and I'm gonna outline that. We're gonna have that so this over here. I'm gonna line this up to the left. Just bring this out to the right, boom. You can see there's a little difference between the two, but I think overall this looks really nice. The kerning looks pretty, pretty even on left and right, which is really, really important. Now I have this tag, right? So what am I gonna do with this tag? Well, I was thinking about it as I was looking at this logo earlier and one of the things I thought would, how cool would it be is to make this a part of the G. All right, so now that I've had this in here, I'm gonna actually gonna take both layers. I'm gonna copy it. So I'm gonna hit Alt or Option right there and copy it. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that out of there so I can just kind of keep this. Now what I need to do is I need to make sure that this is on top. I'm gonna bring this out. I'm actually gonna cut 
this section out of the G. So I'm gonna hold this layer and I'm gonna click this layer. It looks like these are two are grouped. So let me go like this. Let me hit Shift Control or Shift Command G again. Ungroup it so I can just get just this letter. There we go. Make sure the Shift Command or Control and hit the arrow uh, next to the straight line. Just two, two from the P there, the, the colon. Um, there we go. So I have that in there and I'm gonna hit this. I'm gonna hit this. I'm gonna go over to my Pathfinder tool now. So it looks like I gotta open up my Pathfinder tool. Here we go. Beautiful. So now that I have that, I can just go like this and pull that right out of there. Oh, and I thought a little too quickly there. I moved a little too fast. I need to duplicate this because what happens, there we go. If I select this, that's going to disappear and you're going to lose that. So let me go ahead and bring this back now. Copy this again, alter option, right? Put this here. I'm going to go boom. Same thing. Just making some slight adjustments so that you can actually see this. There we go tag. So I think that's pretty clear, but what I'm going to do too is just to even it top and bottom. I like things to be balanced out. I'm going to pull this and hit con command or control Y and you can kind of see, I'm going to pull some of this out of the top of the G. So I'm going to go like that. Boom. Give it a little bit more space. Just free it up a little bit more. I think that's a little too much. So let me go back down just a little bit here. Click that. Boom. There we go. So I like that. You got the tag inside there and you can make this stand out kind of like in the original logo. If you look here, I'll hit place, drop that, that original logo back in, tag electronics, right? So if I really wanted to, I can take this, boom. Now one of the things that I didn't like about this is there was too many colors. You have orange, you have red, and you have blue, I think is what this is. You kind of need to pick a color. So what I would do is on the tag, I would probably go with a red, white, and blue. Just, just me, I'm not crazy about the orange, but that's just me. So let's just show you here. There's the blue color. You can see here over here on my left. Go ahead and grab that. That's going to make it stand out. And then what I need here is I need to drag this guy down onto my artboard, make them match up. And then I need to get an electronics that looks like this. Now you notice this is all in caps. So E L E C T R O N I C S electronics. Just got to look at, look at it and make your adjustments. So let's see here. And then what I do want to do is go into my character. So window type, type's gonna be down here at the bottom, character, there we go. And I'm gonna adjust my kerning. So I can just go in here and you can see here, I can adjust my kerning. Now you wanna make sure that when you're adjusting this kerning, that the kerning is even across all the letters. So you can see here, it looks like it's evenly spaced. This gap between the C and the S does not look as wide as it does with the E and the L, right? So I need to adjust this E and the L a little bit. So I'm gonna hit Alt or option and go to the left a little bit too. Same thing here, same thing here. That one's gonna go out a little bit. That one's fine, I'm gonna bring that one in, this one in, this one in. It's not always perfect when you download a font. So now that I have that, I'm gonna make it the same color as the tag. There we go, bring this in. And let's use some guides. Let's just make sure that we're totally lined up here. So we're gonna grab a guide from the left Grab a, grab a guide into the right. There we go. And I'm actually gonna take this little dot inside the tag. Let's check this out. I like to do this sometimes. Kind of think outside the box. We're just gonna move it. There we go. Right to the middle. I think that's about middle right there. There we go. Beautiful. So now we have everything lined up. I'm gonna take this guy right here. Move this in just a little bit more. Right there. Same thing on this side. I'm just gonna grab this. Up. There we go. Okay, so I can do one of two things. I can take this and drag it up and then take it and outline it. Now, I'm not gonna be able to edit it, so what I wanna do first is copy this so I have a copy of it over here and then I'm gonna outline it. So Shift Command or Shift Control O to get to outline it. That looks pretty darn good so far. So let me go ahead and take these guides off now. So I'm gonna go to Effect Window. Let's see your guides. I can hide the guides or I can unlock the guides, which is what I wanna do unlock these. There we go. I'm going to group all this together. So I'm going to hit command or control G. I'm going to group all these together, command or control G. And then I'm going to use that align tool that we've used in the past to make sure that everything is perfectly aligned. See that actually threw it off because it's lining it up with the actual tag. So I'd have to align it a little bit different. I'd click on this, this and this and make this one object and then undo this one. There we go. So now I can align these guys. Perfect. So it looks like that's pretty aligned right there. Now you can see the legibility. So I love the concept that Wendell created here 
uh, with the tag, but you can see it just takes away from this T and it's kind of hard to read. And you got the kind of balance of hanging off to the left. I wanted to do something similar that wasn't so unbalanced, that had a little bit more balance to it, it was a little cleaner. And hopefully this is what you guys are looking for. So this is just a simple logo re redo and edit that I wanted to do for him. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to a second logo now. All right, so I wanna do a second one. Last time I only got to do one logo, and this time I actually wanna knock out two. Now, please send an email to logos at gmail.com so I can have more to work with. So when you send the logo, I'd love to get it in a high resolution, in a vector format. It needs to be a good quality logo that I can work on. Uh, preferably if it's in vector format, that's gonna make life much, much easier. But if you don't have an vector, that's okay. I can do what I did here and I can live trace it and recreate it that way. Um, if it's a complicated or busy logo, I'm going to need it in vector. So I'm very picky about what I'm gonna be editing just because the amount of time that it's gonna take to be able to do these on the YouTube videos and being able to hold people's attention. So with all that said, I wanna go ahead and jump on to logo number two. All right, so logo number two, let's go ahead and place it in here. I'm gonna pick one right now. So. We got this dope since the 90s. Now, I saw this one originally. I thought it was really, really cool. And there was a couple small things that I would have done differently uh, if I were to do this logo. So I like this one a lot. Let's see what else we got. We got this one, dope since the 90s. This one, I think, needed the most amount of work, but for the sake of time today, we're not gonna have time. Uh, just a small little critique before I kind of move on to the next one is just this going outside the box, this being inside the box, the way the drop shadow is, and some of the kerning here you can see in between the letters. The kerning's kind of off, and I would have balanced this out with four and four and brought this in a little bit more and probably done something just a slight, slightly different with the Synsta, but that's just some quick feedback on that before I jump into this next one. So, all right, so let's go in here. I'm gonna drop this into the canvas. Boom, and look at that. That's actually pretty big, so I don't even have to stretch it any bigger, which is great. Thank you, Wendell, for doing that for me. And then I'm gonna do something very similar to this, but. I'm gonna kind of redraw a lot of these shapes on my own with the pen tool. So we're gonna go ahead up to the top here. And again, he used a nice big bold font that looks like it could be an aerial black, um, something really bold. And I noticed this since the 90s. This is a classic font that was used and I think it does fit the era, which is great. Uh, let me go ahead and lock this layer, lock that. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna lock just that bottom layer here. There we go. And then I got to recreate this little lightning bolt. So this should be fun. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so there's lightning bolt one, and I'm pretty sure both of these are the same type of lightning bolt. They're just flipped horizontally. So that'll be easy for me to recreate. I already have the outline of it. Let me go ahead and here and fill it. And then the last piece to do, aside from the lettering, is this box. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a box. So that should be pretty much everything. Now I just gotta spell out the words and this is gonna be through a stroke. So you'll see how I duplicate the layers. You're gonna learn a lot in this tutorial. This one's gonna be packed with a lot of gold. So let me go ahead and turn off this background now so you can see that. All right, so now I wanna go fill some of these other shapes. So I got this shape here. All right, so we're good to go now. So now we just gotta get that dope in there. And since the 90s. So we're gonna go ahead and lock that up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer because I wanna build that on top for the moment. I'll end up dragging it back down later, but we're gonna go ahead and click and drag. I like what he did here. So I just wanted to make some slight changes. So dope, all right, make sure it's all evenly spaced. We're gonna go to the right font. Where's our fonts? Let's pull this back open here, boom. Looks like the font palette is right here. Drag that in there, character. Now well, let's go ahead and use, maybe let's see what that demo looked like. Mont demo. See, I like that. I think it matches really, really well with what we had in there already. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that. We can always go back to the layers that we need to, turn it back on and see how it lines up. Now remember we did that kerning, so we're gonna need to do the same thing again. The font you use is really key so let's see, let me pull this in, whoops. There we go, bring that in here. Oh, we're just gonna make that bigger. Let's see here, back to character. Let's go ahead and bring this out, there we go. All right, so we got that in there now. So you'll notice here, it looks like the kerning is definitely off across this whole design. 
Uh, but now that I got it right, it's kind of standing out. So I'm gonna take this layer, I'm gonna copy it so I have it. I'm gonna hit Shift Command O and outline it. I'm gonna do the white that was on here. Let me go ahead and get rid of that background layer because I don't need it anymore. I just know that there's a huge stroke around it. Let's see here. There we go. So let me go ahead and take this out. There we go. And I'll add the other little stroke to the lightning bolts behind there, but I know what I'm doing here now. So we got this, so we got the dope inside there, pretty much in the same spot. We're gonna copy this one more time. You saw that it was hot pink, so we're gonna use that hot pink. And we're gonna go ahead and flip this stroke to the outside. We're gonna fill it back in with that pink again. And then I'm gonna go over to my stroke over here on the right, which is this one right here. We're gonna go ahead and increase that. So we're probably gonna to wanna to go to fill it completely in. I'm guessing 30 to 40, maybe even 50. We're just go to 50. I think we're good there. Bring this back over here. And hit Command or Control and the letter next to the P, the, the bracket. There we go. And let's just bring this in here nice and clean. Okay, so I think it needs to go a little bit more. And if you notice the one that was in there previously, it actually had rounded corners. So instead of it being so harsh and kind of choppy, let me pull this up and show you. Just minimize this for a second. See how that kind of had some rounded corners? I like what he did. Um, the rounded corners doesn't really fit with the rest of the design. So that's actually gonna be one of the changes I'm gonna make. I'm actually gonna keep the more squared off corners rather than having rounded corners. So we're gonna keep that. Let me turn this back off. There we go. And then he, what he did too, is he had a blue color. If you saw there, I don't know where that blue came from, but it was kind of just, um, off to the left. It was like a drop shadow that was sticking off to the left. And I think it takes away from the overall design and this is going to pop a lot better. So what I want to do though, is I do want to add some sort of a little stroke to this. I'm going to copy this layer. I'm going to do the stroke thing again, and I'm probably going to use one of the other colors. So like probably the purple, right? I'm going to fill this on a stroke. I'm gonna bring this back right here to where it's supposed to be. There we go. Over to the right. And then I'll just make this a little bit bigger and you'll see here. There we go. And then I'm gonna add this stroke to the outside so you can hear a line stroke to the outside. I like that a lot. See how like bright and vibrant, it really makes it pop off with the pink, the purple, and the white. There's a lot of contrast going on there. Now, what we need to do is I'm gonna bring this down a little bit just to kind of fit inside here. Cause I like this little corner kind of coming up in here. So I'm actually gonna scoot this up just a little bit. The alignment of some of these things is really, really great. He did a great job with his alignment. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. There we go. Just kind of tighten that thing up. And now that we've got everything aligned, what I need to do is get the since, since the nineties in here. And I'm gonna actually gonna do this in all caps as well. So let me go in here since the nine whoops 90s now you can't see it yet but you will so just hang with me i'm going to go back to the transform tool go to my character it's because it's at 400. there we go and we're going to use that same type of font that he had before where's that font at i know what he used there there we go i'm going to adjust the kerning on this because this is way off All right, so let me turn this white. There we go, dope since the 90s. I wanna bring this up, just kinda of bring this up a little tighter. Keep it away from that, there we go. Bring this up a little tighter. I wanna give this just a little bit more breathing room. And then if we want, we can keep these double lightning bolts. We can just go like this, hold down alter option and duplicate them if we really want to. I like lightning bolts in yellow, to be honest with you. So I'm probably gonna use some yellow behind them just to make them pop. Go behind there on this one. There we go. Same thing here. Boom. I'm probably gonna bring this guy in here to the left a little bit. There we go. So that feels like a really great improvement. Let's go ahead and drop in the original one next to it and just see the difference between the two. Let's see, file, place, go back to that first one there. So you can see what we did isn't crazy different, but I actually like it. Hopefully you like it as well. I feel like it's easier to read. 
um, has a cleaner block. And what actually, now that I'm seeing these two side by side, one of the things I want to do is I want to increase the height. Let's see here. How do I increase the height of this font? Whoa, let's try that. There we go. I'm going to do this shift command. O. I'll bring this up a little higher and then I can transform shear, bring that back down. Whoops. Go this way. Done. All right. So there we go. There's the two logos side by side. You got the dope on the left, the dope on the right. I like it with the, this background, the dope does pop a little bit more on this, I think. Um, in terms of with this dark, dark background, but this color doesn't match the rest of the design. I don't know where that color came from, but it just doesn't seem to fit. So even if you were to go like this and kind of just bring this up a little bit and have that kind of show up like that, you could do that as well. Just to give it more personality. I would fill this purple here. There we go. And then bring this back behind it. There we go. And then you can kind of have the same effect, but it's really important that you look at the kerning, see how close the white letters are here and then how far it is here and then how close it is here. The kerning was a little bit off. So I wanted to fix that. And I wanted to just make this logo look even cooler than it is now. I'd love to get your feedback on it. Do you think I made it better? Do you think I made it worse? I'm uh, totally open to your feedback. Hope you guys are having a great day and I'll talk to you soon. All right, guys, this is Adrian Boysell. Thank you so much for watching Adrian and its logos. Really excited that you guys were with me on this one. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, the like button, and I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm Adrian, and as always, keep looking up.